Okie dokie. In this problem, they ask us to evaluate the indefinite integral of a function. In this case, the function is t to the fourth plus 8 over t. So we are likely using the reverse power rule in this case, as well as maybe something else. And we'll talk about what that something else is. First, we will start with t to the fourth. So again, the method in reverse power rule is adding an exponent, adding one to the exponent. So we get t to the fifth, and then we divide by whatever that new exponent is. And just like that, we've taken care of the t to the fourth. Now, moving on to the plus eight over t, we saw in a previous problem, hope seen it at this point, if not, uh, we saw that when we had just a t to the first power in the denominator, it's just like having I'll just go ahead and say 8 over t is just like having 8 times 1 over t. So we saw in another example that when we had 1 over t, the antiderivative of 1 over t does not use the reverse power rule because we actually get an error if we do that. We actually get ln of the absolute value of t. So if we think about it, the derivative of ln of t is 1 over t. And so that's why we have 1 over t here. And then the 8 will kind of just float out in front. So the takeaway from this is if you see a, just a regular t in the denominator, you will be dealing with just a natural log, or the antiderivative will just be a natural log of the absolute value of that t. If there's a t term in the denominator with any other exponent, say it was like 1 over t cubed or 7 over t to the 8, whatever. As long as the t has an exponent other than uh, 1, you will use the reverse power rule. But if the exponent is 1 in the bottom, uh, you'll use ln. I, I think I just talked in circles for a minute. I hope that makes sense. So we're looking for this answer. Of course, you have to see it plus c. So we're looking for uh, not this maybe b not this and not this not that all right looks like b is our answer when we break out the eraser let's go ahead and do two more all right reverse power rule right so we add so the, any coefficients i'll mention two and eight will stay out in front so antiderivative will leave the two we add one to the exponent so it goes to three then we divide by that three that's it. We leave the 8, exponent, uh, eight coefficient, and then e to the t has an antiderivative of itself. Oh, say, can you see? This is what we're looking for. So all positive, no negatives, no quotients, uh, not that. Uh, it's very close to e, but not quite. It looks like option A is our best answer. Let's do one more. Looks pretty fun just like any coefficients out in front how they just get carried over any denominator values will kind of just get carried through to the antiderivative so they'll kind of just stay as they are where they are while we take the derivative or sorry the antiderivatives of the other terms so two over three in the first term but then the question is what's the antiderivative of the e to the t well that's just e to the t. And then we keep the minus, and then it's t cubed. The antiderivative of t cubed would be t to the fourth, but then we want to divide by that four. Well, we already have a denominator that we can throw that four into. Since we're dividing by four, that's just the same as throwing four in the denominator. Two times four in the denominator is eight. Oh, say, can you see? We're well, looking for two over three e to the t there might be uh, there's this answer and this answer that has that term the other ones are either negative or just wrong so then we're looking for the minus t to the fourth over eight so it looks like option b is our answer i think that was it if you have any questions please let me know hope this helps